leaving and filing out, I just want to bring attention to one thing, the dance thing. If you know somebody outside of this church that would be blessed by being a part of that, invite them. And if we have enough room, that'd be fantastic. It's a fantastic way to minister to some people. So if you know somebody, uh, Maria and I personally have a friend who was talking about this dance thing, and uh, we invited her to that. So it's open to anybody. Obviously, there's limited spots, but um, you can reach out to some people. Well, today we are, before we get to the sermon, uh, we are going to talk about our missional 2%. And so each, every three months, we give a quarterly missional 2% to a ministry. And so we've given it to Your Loving Choices and the clip, we've given it to people and all that stuff. So today we are giving it to Emmanuel Christian School, which is a Christian school in Hazleton, PA, just uh, 20 minutes below us. And uh, if you don't know anything about Emmanuel Christian School, I work there. So that's an interesting thing. I go there once a week on Wednesdays. And they tolerate me for the whole day. I know you guys know that that must be very difficult for them. So uh, if you're not praying for them, you can continue to pray for them. But um, I have been very blessed by being a part of this ministry. I'm passionate about Christian education. And so we are giving, um, it's not, it's the third quarter. So you got to think way back to July versus October. We have a missional 2%, and we have a check for our missional 2%. Um, and then we will talk about the fourth quarter missional 2% next week. But I'm going to invite the CEO of Emmanuel Christian School, Susan Selby, up. And her uh, husband is also the pastor of kind of our sister church in Mountain View uh, Community Church as well, and a good friend of mine. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to Susan, and she's going to talk about Emmanuel Christian School. So. Um, good morning. Good morning. Um, first, I just want to say thank you for this gift. We greatly appreciate it, and that will um, be going to our scholarship fund for uh, students and families who can't afford the full cost of education. Uh, we do what we do at Emmanuel Christian because of the generosity of donors that we have. Um, so I want to, I'm going to show you a video here in just a minute, um, but I want to just give you a little bit of a background. Um, first of all, I do want to uh, do want to say thank you to Pastor Shane um, and Maria. Um, we appreciate you guys so very much. Um, my husband and I appreciate you, uh, just your family, and Amanda Mission School appreciates this place that, that you're also making. So thank you. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Emmanuel Christian School, we have 150 students in grades kindergarten through 12th grade, and we are located in Hazleton. We actually have students from um, Crestwood School District, Berwick School District, um, Tamaqua, Mahanoy City, Weatherly, and then, of course, Hazleton, and we do provide busing for um, those districts. We were founded in 1979 by the authors of a book called Shepherding a Child's Heart, Ted and Margie Tripp, and that book still guides the grace-based um, teaching and discipline that we do at the school today. One of the biggest things that we get from that is working with kids to figure out what's going on in their hearts instead of just looking at behaviors. You, I'm sure you can appreciate as adults how easy it is to judge motives um, someone does something and we feel offended or hurt, and then we assume um, that they did it to offend or hurt, but they might not have. There, oftentimes there's a zillion other reasons for a behavior than the one that's, that's seemingly on the surface. So that's something we take really seriously at Emmanuel Christian, and that, that is something that makes the school very different from the public school system um, because um, God is the only one who really knows the heart. So, um, okay, so to that, to that end, um, a lot of people don't understand what Christian education is. And so we do do the normal things like Bible class and chapel once a week and we have devotions and we pray with the kids. 
but Christian education is so much more. So this video that I'm going to show you, it does a much better job explaining it in six minutes than I could. Um, but before that is on, I want to show you this. So this is a drawing that um, someone made when they were in 10th grade. And this is a, it's called a Fibonacci spiral. And so the lines behind the spiral are probably hard for you to see um, out there, but they're a bunch of triangles. Um, I can't remember myself, I'm not a math teacher. I think they might be right triangles. But anyway, depending on how they lay the triangles together, there, there's one here and a big one there, they create a spiral. And this is one of the patterns in God's design in creation. So, you, so, so this is an example of Christian education. Um, we aren't just teaching math. We're in every class, math, language, um, science, social studies, in every class, we're trying to help students understand and see the wonders of God in everything we do. So um, in the video, you'll see this Fibonacci spiral in an artichoke plant and in a snail shell. And now that I've shown it to you, if you keep your eyes open, uh, you might see it other places as well when you're walking around out there. So, okay, we can start the, start the video. We live in a world that is constantly changing. New technologies make things like telephones and cords seem archaic. Trends change so quickly that kids feel the pull to purchase the latest fashion, device, or product, only to find out that what was popular in the spring is out of date by the end of the year. Cultural norms of the way we eat together or not, what we spend our money on, and how we raise our children are like shifting sand. Society tells us who we are supposed to be as a people, what the world is like, and whether there is a God and what he is like, if he indeed exists. In such a world, swayed by fleeting trends, how can we find a solid foundation on which to build our identities? We must look to the unchanging certainties of the universe, the reality that Christian education is built upon. God created fixed patterns, patterns which we can discover for ourselves. Students can study and memorize them. When they do this, they will begin to find patterns in other studies. This allows students to discover new applications of timeless truths. Mathematics and God are inseparable. The certainty of mathematics is due to God. The laws of math reflect God's character or God's attributes. The orderliness of the creation reflects God's character. And it's this orderliness that is described using the language of mathematics. So they're inseparable. Modern education has a different basis than Christian education. Facts, values, reason, and nature are constructs of individuals. They are not objective, unchanging realities. Rather, they depend on the perspective of the people creating them. So people say, you can believe what you want, and I will believe what I want. In the area of behavior, we see the chaos that rules as children are encouraged to express themselves and are given little restraint for fear of damaging their self-image. Adults are now allowing children to make their own choices and decisions beyond their understanding or ability to do so, including whether they want to go to school or not. Rules and laws, right and wrong, become dependent on social constructs rather than and unchanging certainties. This way of thinking does immeasurable damage to the educational process as children come to misunderstand the authority of a teacher. They miss that God has placed a good authority in their lives to nurture, care for, and guide them. In modern society, we have this crazy notion, which is as old as the Garden of Eden, that we as human beings know best what is good for Men are inherently self-centered, and because of this, uh, what comes out of man 
man's mind and man's imagination cannot really serve as a basis for our system of laws. Christian education is built on the premise that there are certain fixed and unchangeable laws in the universe that guide and direct our interactions with our neighbors, that guide and direct how parents interact with their children, and that guide and direct how teachers interact with their students. Undergirding all of these relationships is that fixed and unchangeable truth that human beings have an inherent dignity because they have been created in the image of God. At Emmanuel Christian School, we believe that objective discoverable patterns can be found in things studied due to the reality of an unchanging God who created the patterns. We see this in literature and grammar. God is a God of absolutes, and one of the ways he shows that uh, is through his, his uh, unchanging nature, his, the way he's always consistent and faithful. And we see that in grammar. We see that in a lot of patterns in grammar. One of those ways is through what we call direct object. And we start with a subject like the girl. And then we have an action verb like ate. And then we have an object like the hammer. So the girl ate the hammer. That pattern consistently works. When we have a subject, action verb, we're going to follow it generally with an object. If we reverse it, we get some crazy. The hammer ate the girl. And it doesn't make any sense. Or if we take the subject and put it with a linking verb, the girl is, we get something totally different. We don't get an object, we get a, a describing word or a, a naming word that comes after it, so it won't be an object. So even in language, God has built into the way we do language a testimony to the fact that he's a God of absolutes, of consistent patterns in the way he's designed us because that's who he is. Christian education reflects the truth found in Psalm 111, verse 2, that says, Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. At Emmanuel Christian School, we want students to be amazed by the wonder of the world all around them. When they study and ponder over the fixed, unchanging certainties of the world, its patterns and designs, students can find stable answers to life's questions concerning their identity and purpose, their world and how it works. So we are in our admission season right now. Um, we are we have a need-based tuition structure. We want to make it possible for anyone to attend Emmanuel Christian School who would like to, to go there. So different uh, folks pay tuition based on their income levels. So the average family pays about $300 a month. Um, we have families that pay $2,500 a year, and we have other families that pay $7,000 a year. So it all depends on income levels. And then it's for the family. So um, we have families who have multiple children that are lower income, and it's just based on their family's income. So it's not a per child um, thing because it ends up becoming cost prohibitive. So, the, so again, the way we do that is through um, the generosity of financial partners. The parent contribution for our budget um, only covers about 40% and everything else we get from grants and donors. And over the last six years, our donor base has been growing and it's all, it's all God. <laughs> um, so there, I wanna let you know just two other things. Um, ways that we uh, have folks support us is we have multiple churches that have come behind us and now including yours, so thank you very much. Um, we also have a 40 for 40 program. It was our 40th anniversary a couple years ago, and so 
we are we have a group of 40 people who give $40 a month and we're looking we're always looking for more people to join that and come behind the, the cause and then there I don't know if most of you know there is a PA tax credit program that is Pennsylvania's form of school choice and even if some of you can't participate in it it's just good to get the word out there because um, most people don't know about it so any person or business who has an annual income of about 90,000 or more per year and pays Pennsylvania state taxes can divert all of that tax money to scholarships for students at private schools. Um, it's a very big deal <laughs> and it's very grassroots. I have to go out and talk to each individual person. So if you know anyone that would be interested in becoming one of our joyful givers and supporting what we're doing, who owns a business and pays PA taxes, please let me know. I'd be happy to talk to them. Um, so finally, I just want to close and say the reason I'm doing what I do at Emmanuel Christian School um, goes way back to when I was a little girl. My parents were divorced. They were not going to church, and a neighbor invited me to church. And that neighbor uh, stopped at my house for many years um, and waited out front for, and picked me up and took me to church. Um, I think I probably started going at the age of 10, and I probably stopped going sometime in high school, and then I came back to Christ when I was older. Um, but those seeds that were planted were so important. And thinking about Pastor Shane saying, advancing the kingdom, that's what happened, is someone stopped and, and took me to church every every Sunday. Um, I even had my own picture in the church directory. <laughs> so, um, so I met Jesus when I was a little girl. And that's what brought me back when, when I became an adult. Um, and that's that's the number one reason I'm doing what I'm doing at Emmanuel Christian School is to advance the kingdom through Christian education. So thank you for having me, and God bless you.